Hello, this is Derek from Sports Info. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, um, we're done practicing here, so I'm going to turn it over to Coach for a recap from Saturday on film and uh, to take your questions on Purdue. Um, in terms of the Maryland game, it was about, you know, obviously what we thought after the game when I had a chance to get together with you guys. I thought defensively we played about as well as we have all year against a very potent offensive team. Um, offensively, I wasn't thrilled with our, you know, possessions as I watched it. I thought we were missed some shots. Those are the ones you can't control. Had we made a few more, maybe it would have been a little bit different. But I thought we had some possessions where we got out of character a little bit, especially during that run uh, over the course of seven minutes where, you know, we went scoreless that I thought really was the difference in the game. You know, thought we became too jump shot heavy um, and, and, and needed to, you know, need to learn from that. But all in all, I thought we played pretty hard. I thought defensively we were good. We defensive rebounded it well, took good care of the ball for the most part, and, uh, and did some really good things, especially on the defensive end. Your offensive rebounding efforts got to be a little bit better. Second half, we had 16 opportunities to get an offensive rebound, and we got one. A part of that is we got to move the ball, be a little bit more patient, uh, and, and not fall in love as much with early jump shots, especially at that juncture in the game if we've missed two, three, four in a row. You know, we've got to be able to recognize that uh, and, 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 uh, and, and get the ball to the paint better than what we did the other day. So I thought we definitely took a step in the right direction, especially relative certainly to the first time we played them uh, on the defensive end. That's what probably stood out. we got to build on that. In terms of tomorrow, obviously Purdue is – you know, great challenge. They're really – they've got great size. They rebound it well. They've got great interior scoring, great three-point shooting, uh, very unselfish. You know, they're averaging around 20 assists a game, which is, you know, the most in uh, among the tops in the country. Um, you know, and I think they've got a real good blend of uh, interior and, and perimeter uh, scoring and threats that makes them very difficult to guard. You know, they're always stingy defensively and do a great job of defensive rebounding. So you don't get – you know, you have to really work to get second shots against them. And, uh, you know, it'll be a, be a good challenge for us. We're ready to get back out there. It's one of the, you know, beauties of playing in the Big Ten game unless it happens to be one of, you know, one of your two bye weeks. The next one's coming in about two to three days. So you got to have amnesia pretty quickly and, and move on and – and uh, get your mind and your body right for the next one. So that's what we've done over the last couple of days. Questions? Hey, John, this is Mark. Uh, I asked you about Tracy the other day, and I should have asked you if, A, anything physical going on there. B, is it just a, a, a little funk, any, anything um, that you can't pull out of? What's, what's your take on him? Well, I just uh, the shooting doesn't bother me a whole lot. Tough. I'm always kind of wired that way. I'm more – you know, concerned about continuing to get our team and Tracy to take care of the ball and defend uh, better, uh, really locking in on those things. As long as he's taking good shots, you know, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to live with that. I think over the matter, uh, over time, over a period of time, he'll be fine there. But, uh, you know, just continuing to challenge our team to take care of the ball and defend. And we've come a long way. I mean, he got 58 turnovers in five league games. You know, we're averaging just a little over 11. If you remember where we were early in the year, you know, that's a lot of, lot of progress to defend the way we did the other day uh, against Michigan and Maryland and back-to-back -back games was a lot of progress. So we're getting – obviously would have liked to have closed that one the other day. I thought we played really well for the bulk of the game. The one stretch in there that hurt us is when we missed 10 straight shots and, you know, didn't score for seven minutes and – even with that, against a team as good as Maryland, you know, we're a one and one away from cutting it to three. We're a couple, you know, two or three looks that Jay Cole had on some things we ran were wide open. He missed those. I mean, we had our chances at the end even going through that drought, you know, which tells me that our defense was pretty good. So we've got to continue to build on that. It's more team for me right now than just, you know, obviously singling out Tracy. But the better we can get him to play, certainly that will help our team. So I understand the question. But my focus with him has been more on running our team, uh, taking care of the ball, defending better, um, not only himself, but also our group. Well, Jay, John, what about um, – what about, could you just talk a little bit about Swanigan? His numbers have been phenomenal, obviously. And 
it looks like he's gobbling up rebounds. So uh, what, what, what advancement do you see in year two from him? Yeah, he's, I think he's one of the best players in the country, obviously. His statistics show that, watching him on film. Certainly, I feel that way now. And, you know, he can play inside and outside and, you know, can make threes at, you know, right 40-plus clip on the season and I think high 30s and Big Ten play. He can score in the post. He can pass. He's He moves his feet defensively well. I think he's one of those guys that can impact the game defensively, rebounding, and offensively. You know, so he's that special three-way guy, you know, that does it in all three of those areas and certainly makes him one of the best players in the country. Hey, John, this is Scott. Uh, you mentioned Purdue three-point shooting uh, at the start. And I know their percentage has dropped a little bit in Big Ten play, but the time has gone. top ten, I think, nationally. Uh, what's been the difference there for them? Well, I think, first of all, they, they've recruited really good shooters. I mean, the guys who can make shots. Klein, Matthias can make shots. Edwards can make shots. I mentioned Swanigan earlier. You know, on the season, Swanigan is shooting 47% from three. Uh, you know, Ed, Edwards at 44. Uh, Vince, you know, Matthias, 48. Thompson, 40. Klein, 45. I mean, those guys can make shots. And obviously... The inside play complements their outside play and vice versa. So the quality of the three that they get because of the presence of those guys inside and, you know, the the positioning that the bigs get because of the three-point shooting on the outside blends well together and they play very well together. They're unselfish. Like I said, they're averaging around 20 assists a game. I mean, you know, so they're, they're, they're good. I mean, no question about it offensively from an efficiency standpoint. They're, they're one of the best teams in the country. And I guess um, just with their bigs and yours, you know, how do you see that matchup going? I mean, your post rotations uh, changed over the course of the season. Just what do you like about the group now? Maybe going up against Swanigan and Haas and then Edwards even. Well, I mean, obviously you, it's, it, we got a collection of guys that play four and five. They've got a collection of guys, and you know, I'm hopeful tomorrow that we can, you know, obviously scoring, rebounding, defending all those areas. We got to be competitive. You know, our front line has to – it's not just front line versus front line. It's Illinois versus Purdue. But our front line has got to be good for us tomorrow. You know, obviously as potent and and as good as their front line is at both ends of the floor. Their size affects, uh, you know, the defensive end for them. And then obviously they're scoring at a high clip efficiency-wise with their bigs. And, you know, they they rebound the ball. So we've got no question about it. I think that's a key – uh, tomorrow, our guys understand that, and you know, I think our four and fives are looking forward to the challenge. I guess uh, with uh, Finky, I noticed Saturday he was the last out to warm up, so I know he was getting treatment this morning. Is that maybe left over from, I guess, maybe whatever foot uh, thing he had against Michigan early on? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's taking care of his body. You know, he has done a good job with uh, getting himself ready to play. Um, you know, could that linger? How long? I don't know. You know, Fink's a pretty tough guy, man, mentally and physically. Like, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, may not play through, uh, you know, foot stuff. But he, he does. Morgan has as well. You know, those guys have a little toughness to them. Obviously, they want to be out there. And uh, he's done a good job of getting himself ready to practice and ready to play. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's from that night against Michigan. But, but, John, he is available tomorrow as far as you know right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Lord permitting. Coach, this is Derek. Obviously, you want to start every game well, uh, but knowing how the last couple of road games have went, is there more of a point of emphasis to have a good start in a tough environment against this type of opponent? Yeah, without question. You know, we've got to start better. We said that coming out of the Indiana game. I didn't think we started very well uh, in the Maryland game. Uh, We've got to start better tomorrow. And I don't know what that means score-wise. You know, obviously, you want to make every shot and you want to keep them from – making any. We all want that, but I think it's more, uh, you know, physical disposition, mental disposition, controlling what we can control, um, you know, getting off to a better, uh, off to a better start. Is that all for coach? One more DV. Uh, mm-hmm. Back to Tracy. He talked about uh, sitting down with the staff and talked about maybe doing some different things. Uh, with respect to the game plan, can you comment on all at all on that and maybe what's your, uh, is for him going forward for Tracy 
Yes. Uh, it hasn't changed. I mean, we need him to quarterback, have a voice, take good care of the ball, defend, you know, uh, take and make open shots at an efficient level. You know, I mean, it, it's been the same all year. Nothing's really changed with that. That's been that's been pretty steadfast. That's what we think he can do. We think he's more than capable of that. You know, we believe that he can do that. He's done that uh, a lot this season. And, um, you know, right now it's, I think, you know, just a matter of kind of playing through a couple things and, and uh, you know, getting it, helping him figure it out. But in terms of his role, that hasn't changed. Yeah, I got one more on Tracy, actually. Um, you mentioned after the Missouri game when you found out that that was, yeah, he said that was one of the, yeah, the first time you found out. But I look back and he only had one more. That was when he was a freshman. The foul trouble seems to be a little bit of an issue now. Is there anything different in, in how he's playing that's maybe leading to that? Well, I think he's got to play hard without fouling. That's a huge emphasis for us, and we've always been pretty good nationally in that area. You know, being able to compete and play hard without fouling, we've done that at a national level for, you know, really the whole duration of our tenure as a staff. So it's something we emphasize, something that's important, something we're not accustomed to with him. But I would agree with you, even after that, you know, it's creeped in there two or three other times. And, you know, we've got to figure out how to play hard without fouling and be able to get the job done that we need to get done and that he needs to get done, uh, you know, without fouling. So, you know, he's he's aware of it. I think, obviously, it disrupts rhythm a little bit. You know, it's the first time he's ever went through that on any type of consistent basis over a stretch of games. So he's well aware of it and knows how important it is to compete and play hard without fouling. Okay. okay, thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you, over Thank you. tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Safe travels. <laughs> and I am a.